This is a 19th century novel about an adulterous woman in 17th century Salem. What happened between us at a consecration of its own? We felt it so. Have you forgotten? I've not forgotten. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and in this installment of Mojo Notes, we'll be exploring 10 things you should know about Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. Number 10. About the Author Born in 1804 in Salem, Massachusetts, Nathaniel Hawthorne started writing as a youth and worked as a magazine editor following college. After publishing his first novel in the late 1820s, he continued to write short stories and fictional works. Hawthorne also worked in politics. He died in 1864. Number 9. Influences and Inspirations the Scarlet Letter is a fictional novel categorized under the romantic genre of literature. Since Hawthorne makes allusions to real-life people, it's also considered a work of historical fiction. Religious references also make an appearance. I apologize for the coarseness of my hands, mistress, but here in the colonies, everyone must work. I look forward to the hard work, Governor. As we read in Psalms 92, I will triumph in the works of my hands. Number 8. Settings and Era Hawthorne was inspired by the 17th century Salem witch trials for the novel, which is set around this time and in the town's surrounding areas. What's happening, Major? It appears that we've cornered ourselves a witch. Hmm? Here, in Hester Prynne's cottage. During this period, the townspeople had very strict moral beliefs and expected everyone to behave accordingly to their religion's rules. Number 7. Plot this is the story of my mother, Hester Prynne. Narrated by an all-knowing third person, The Scarlet Letter follows the story of Hester Prynne, who is charged with committing adultery. This is Roger Prynne. By order of the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, you are ordered to appear before the elders and magistrates at 8 tomorrow morning. The townspeople force her to wear a red letter A on her dress and to be publicly shamed for her crime. During this time, her husband, who's believed to be dead, sees his adulterous wife and pledges to enact revenge on the father of his wife's child. I seek no vengeance against you, child, but the man lives who has wronged us both. There's no letter of infamy wrought into his garment, but I shall read it on his heart. He disguises himself as a physician named Roger Chillingworth and threatens Hester to keep his identity secret. After being released from prison, Hester lives as an outcast with her daughter Pearl. Meanwhile, Roger moves in with the sickly Reverend Dimsdale. Reverend Dimsdale, allow me to introduce our newest boarder, Dr. Chilling... Chillingworth. And discovers the minister has a scarlet A on his chest. Though Hester and the Reverend make plans to escape, his guilt ultimately gets the better of him. This leads to Dimsdale's public confession and subsequent death. Number 6. Hester Prynne Hester is a young woman whose husband is lost at sea. There was an attack, an Indian attack on one of our ships. So, when she gives birth to a baby after almost two years, the town accuses her of adultery. As you know very well, there's no law against pregnancy. But there is against adultery. Since the act was considered a crime at the time, Hester must be punished. She doesn't only admit to wrongdoing, but accepts public humiliation. Heed not this final warning, and from this day forward you will be a pariah. After being cast out of the town, she becomes a hardened woman and plans to escape with the Reverend. Though that fails, she does leave the town for a few years. Upon her return, Hester once more becomes an accepted and valued member. Number 5. Reverend Arthur Dimsdale Yes, Reverend. This morning in the forest, why did you not see that you were married? As the town minister, Reverend Dimsdale is an intelligent and caring man who can give a very good sermon. Though he appears dedicated to his beliefs, he demonstrates his hypocrisy by having an affair with a married woman. If her husband would prove to be alive, she still I would have an education. your men would carry a bastard's child. We would hang that woman in a small way to someone who would hide behind and incarcerate her under adultery. However, the Reverend isn't without a conscience, as it's this guilt that ultimately destroys him. 
When he nears the end of his life, Dimsdale finally confesses his crime and accepts his death as punishment. Number 4. Roger Chillingworth Have I changed so much, my beloved, that you would slay me even as I resurrect myself from the dead? Actually Hester's husband in disguise, Roger Chillingworth, is what this old scholar goes by when he finally reaches Salem. Two years ago, Chillingworth sent his wife there while he took care of business back home. When he realizes she cheated on him, he directs his revenge towards the male perpetrator. Arthur, you must leave this place without us. Please, I cannot bear to see you trapped here. After convincing everyone he's a physician, he reveals his evil side by threatening his wife and suspecting the Reverend. However, Chillingworth isn't all that bad. After the Reverend's confession and subsequent death, he forgets about enacting justice and leaves his daughter a generous inheritance. Number 3. Values and Themes One of the themes that drives the plot of The Scarlet Letter is revenge. Specifically, Chillingworth's quest to find the man who impregnated his wife. Because adultery was a crime during the time of the novel, the battle between good and evil, as well as justice and wrongdoing, are also explored. Further themes include guilt, hypocrisy, forgiveness, fate, and free will. Number 2. Modern Popularity because it gave an American slant to moral and religious issues, The Scarlet Letter soon found success. Viewed as his best work, the novel launched Hawthorne into fame and fortune, and was quickly put into mass production. Number 1. Adaptations Due to its universal themes and enduring popularity, Hawthorne's novel has been adapted for theater and referenced in music and literature. It has also been the basis of numerous films, ranging from silent pictures to TV miniseries and the teen comedy Easy A. This brings us to part four. How I, Olive Pendergast, went from assumed trollop to an actual homewrecker. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite piece of Scarlet Letter trivia? With new top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.